probably everyone finds it. You're amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And on that, today on the show, I have Ben Clark. Hey. Ben is a good friend of mine, and uh, yeah, welcome Ben. Fuck, I'm glad I made it to the good friend category, rather than just a, I train him at the gym and make him cry. Yeah, yeah, I had to think about how I would <laughs> <laughs> describe him. I'll say, I'll say good friend. Cheers, I appreciate yeah, that, man. Yeah. So, welcome, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Um, today on the show, we are going to talk about intimate relationships and mental health, how they can impact each other, and yeah. So Ben's had a bit of experience. A bit of experience, to yeah. say the least, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Sweet lately and um why don't you just tell me a little bit about your most recent long-term relationship yeah okay uh, where to start so um yeah recently i said recently it was you know, a little bit uh, about a year ago came out of a, a long-term relationship was with um her for it was just about four years um and um we've been talking a lot about Sorry, I say we, me and Rich have been talking a little bit about this. Uh, it's one of those things that in reflection, it was obviously, obviously the relationship didn't work and it was one of those ones where in hindsight, there have been a lot of times where I should have realized earlier that what the result would have been in this situation. Um, and then through many, I don't know, attempts at making it work, you know pushing through and stuff like that it got to the point where it was just almost being more detrimental trying to make it work than taking what was the right approach but probably the harder approach at the time of actually just calling it quits yeah um and that's one of the biggest hindsights probably that i've had out of that was trying so hard to make it work because you want to but actually you're just really pushing shit uphill and hoping that it, you know, gets to the top. Yeah. That's probably the blunt way I'd describe it. <laughs> what were some of the detrimental things? Let's get into the, let's get straight into that. Yeah, so, so a couple of, the ways, probably the three biggest things that I would say is I got very detached from my family, um, as in, like, all of my focus basically needed to be on the relationship, and I lost all of my uh, family, um, like friendships through that um actually friendships being the other piece as well i stopped hanging out with friends and basically dropped off the face of the earth to all of them um with no real known reason why um slowly been building that up, that stuff up recently and it's and it's good to get all that because it's kind of like one of those shit this is this is the stuff that i put aside um and that would hit hard um and then just even having to almost put more effort and energy into the relationship than my work. I was probably letting work slide, um, you know, being a bit dodgy about not showing up to work due to priorities or what I thought were my higher priorities and stuff like that. And actually getting myself into risky situations as a result of that. Um, they were some of the biggest things that I... Yeah, almost I put at the top of my list to try and make things work and make things smooth sailing and better, but actually I shouldn't have had to. And um, yeah, it's it's something that it put me in a bad mental state. It put me in a bad physical state as well. Um, and actually that was another thing that I ended up having to give up was the, the fitness and health aspect of it. Um, just due to the way that I was almost being, I wouldn't say forced to, um, but it was very much, I, to make things more comfortable, I was in a situation where I, you know, I couldn't hang out with friends, I couldn't hang out with family, I couldn't go and do hobbies, I couldn't go to the gym or work on fitness or health or anything like that, because it was putting into, putting myself into other places that then caused tension between the two of us. So what did she, she, yeah? Yeah. Oh, it was a woman, okay. It was. <laughs> no, just, just so everyone else no, knows. Fair. yes. Straight. She, she, straight. <laughs> straight, single. <laughs> what, <laughs> what was it she was demanding of you? Um, I think she was demanding, it wasn't specifically, I wouldn't say demanding of my time. That's probably not the way that I, I would phrase it. Definitely attention and... I don't know if it was uh, due to 
difficulties or issues of, of, of her confidence or trust of from her past um, that made it that if I was not around, almost being monitored by her, that I could be out doing all sorts of dodgy things and... Um, yeah, basically that I, I needed to be there. I needed to make sure, basically not, not tending to her hand and foot, but basically being around her in any time that was not f at work, I had to be there with her. And that was, it was, o I want to say it was okay. Obviously it's not okay now that I phrase it, but um, it was almost like what I had just assumed was expected of me. Um, and... That comes from the relationship, the, the long main relationship that I'd had prior to that um, was actually on the opposite end of the spectrum. As in, uh, me and her were almost living our own lives, living in our own lanes, and we'd come together every now and then to do things. Um, and as a, I don't know if it's as a result of that or whatever, she ended up cheating on me. Um, and then taking maybe experience from that into this relationship I didn't feel at the time as bad about being you know super attached to her yeah. because I was like well okay my previous partner had cheated on me if I'm in this situation with her and you know sacrificing the other things I don't I don't have to go through the pain and anguish that that situation gave me so it basically went from one side being you know very little relationship, very little attachment to probably way more than what is expected or should should be expected and what is net uh yeah normal yeah yeah <clears throat> and that felt okay at the time, but in hindsight it really isn't right what um were the repercussions if you were not there you know if you were yeah um so early on in the relationship, there were a few times where I had gone away um, on a on a away for a competition um, of one of my hobbies, and everything was okay. Like we were still texting and stuff like that, and everything seemed fine during that. And then I came back, and things weren't quite right initially. And I had actually found out that as off the back of us. Uh, of me being away that she had very much spiraled in a bad way um, while I was not there and I don't know I never I don't think ever got the understanding of what caused that other than the fact that I think she was just maybe worried paranoid perhaps that I was doing dodgy things I mean I was up in Whangarei it's not like I was overly out on the prowl or anything like that. I was yeah, literally yeah. with a whole bunch of nerds playing a game. <laughs> so it's not really the setting where I'm going to be doing dodgy stuff. Yeah, but yeah. And when you say spiral, do you mean like in terms of her, with your relationship or was she like, um, was it her own, I think, like I think her spiraled? own, yeah, her own health. I, it, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to phrase this. She basically had told me that she was not okay, that she had been, crying and stuff like that um she had thought about self-harm stuff like that so really yes. dangerous situation to be in um and obviously hearing that after i managed to eventually get this out of her was um it was bad right and it and it really screwed me up um it, it, that was one of those things where maybe wrongfully I put all of that situation on my shoulders saying this all happened because of me, which in hindsight, it shouldn't have been right. It is not, it is not for me to own somebody else's burden. It is probably a wrong weight to bear. Um, so cause of that, yeah, it, it fucked me up. Right. And it basically put me in a position where that was where I, that was the last time I basically was involved in that hobby. I, I axed it pretty much then and there and said, look, I can't be part of this because if I'm going away and, or doing these things, you know, I don't know. I could come back to you know, a bloody massacre at the house and that's not what I want to see. And I basically, instead of trying to work through it in maybe a more healthy manner, turned around and said, this can't happen if I don't let it happen. So I disassociated from the hobby and dropped off the face of that earth. Um, 
that had its own repercussions, basically saying that, you know, I had this thing that I loved so dearly. Um, and I wanted to be part of the hobby. I wanted to be playing it. It was a great outlet. It was a great enjoyment, fun, hanging out with friends, you know, all those things that you want to, you get out of a hobby doing stuff, right? Um, and putting all of that in this, okay, I can pretty much never do this again category. Um, it sucked, right? And I'd still be part of all the groups and stuff on, on social media, on Facebook and stuff, seeing, you know, the competitions that I would be going to happen, seeing people talk about it, seeing even the, the social groups that I'm part of talking about, you know, what is happening for the next events and stuff and who's going, just watching all of that happen and feeling like, okay, you know, the bus is gone and I'm now just sitting here watching it go. That sucked. And that made me, that made me feel like I was progressively losing things in my life, but I didn't know how to like keep that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at least not in a way where I could juggle both of those scenarios, right? One where I get to keep doing the thing that I love, but also then keep a healthy relationship where I'm not worried. Like if I, if I'd gone along and done, you know, if I'd traveled again for this hobby and then I would, the whole time I was, I'd be away for that weekend. I'd be paranoid that, you know, something bad is happening back at home yeah, yeah, and I would not have been focused. I wouldn't have been involved or in it or anything like that. And then at that stage, there would have been, it wouldn't have been any point. So <clears throat> yeah, it was basically, I can't juggle these two and whether it was the right or the wrong call, the relationship, I mean, I was in the relationship and I'm the kind of person that when I'm in one, I am all in it. Um, and so that was my priority and that I want to try and make that work. So I sacrificed that. Yeah. The, the, the social hobby aspect. Yeah. Yeah. And was, um, I mean, were you feeling or thinking that something was off with the relationship, especially when you had to give up such a yeah. important um, hobby? Or did they become, what kind of anything like that? It def I definitely had thoughts around actually, this is something that I shouldn't have to be doing. Um, and I tried having conversations with her several times over, over this, um, basically saying, Hey, I want to be going and doing this. Um, I want to try and work through with you in a way that, you know, could you come along with me for that weekend? So you're not then worried about what I could be doing. Like it is just like a game, like it's all just a bit of fun. I'm not going to be doing anything malicious or dodgy or behind your back. Um, so if you'd like to, you're welcome to come along. Some of the other guys have in the past brought their partners along as well. Um, cause you know, it's, it's still, you're like, if you're traveling away for it, you can, you can make it more than just the game that you're going to play. Yeah. Um, so I tried accommodating for it in those situations and they never went in a, um, it never really went in a way that was like, okay, yeah, we can try and make this work. It was usually, oh, I have this that I have to commit to. I have that that I've got to commit to. I can't, we can't make this work. And so it never, so it was basically always in the category of you go do it by yourself and you know, this is the risks. She specifically even told me in one of those cases that if you go away, I will not be okay. Yeah. Which was almost reaffirming that, hey, if you go and do this, something bad's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side was, okay, then drop the hobby. And that was a cho choice that I, I ended up making. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, that's so serious. Yeah. 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 It was, it was brutal. And it, it I mean, I, I can confidently say that it felt wrong like I shouldn't have to do this but I, I guess maybe I never thought about it from this is wrong so this means that this relationship isn't working though it was just okay um these are about compromise these are about you know trying to make our lives which could be you know very polar trying to still make them work together yeah and so you always on so, yeah, so you're really set on trying to make it work and yeah, exactly. figure, it, figure it out as opposed yeah. to being like, oh, maybe this actually isn't Absolutely, for me. correct. And um, I mean, I, I would imagine that, I want to say that most people in a relationship aren't going to sit there and when you go through things that are difficult, turning around and saying, no, I'm just going to rip the cord and call it quits, right? And I, I'm definitely one of those people that would much rather push, like, not as in push as in like force it to work, but figure out how to make it work. Try and come up with solutions and actually mm. make it work. Because you've 
you've created a relationship for some merits that you guys have understood during that journey, right? And as you're on that, you've realized, okay, we are committed to each other. Let's try and figure out how to deal with any, you know, road bumps and struggles as a team. Yeah. And so that was what my mindset always had been. Um, perhaps I let too many of those road bumps stack up to the point where actually this is just not feasible. And I should have thought about them from a, you know, these are all the things that I'm having to do to try and make it work rather than it's a thing over here and a thing over here and a thing over here. So it all seems okay. But when you put them all together, actually it's a lot of sacrifice and it's really weighing on me. Yeah. And let's tell me about how it all started to come. Undone. Undone. Yeah. Or to an end. (laughs) Yeah. Um, how do I describe it? It basically got to the point where I want to say that I felt like I had just, I had started thinking about it from the way that I described it, right? There were too many of these things where I felt I was having to give and perhaps I was looking at it as well saying I'm making, you know, almost like probably too much of a, too much of a programmer like I am and thinking of it. Here's the number of things that I'm sacrificing and here's, if any, things that I can see you sacrificing. And once again, this is my perspective, so I don't know what that other side looked like vividly. I could only say what my perspective was. I had this big list and hers was not long. Hmm. And it got to the point where I started thinking about that where I'm like, I started getting more grumpy and uncaring and it just progressively, like, over that over those four years it had chipped away at me and it got to the point where actually it was just there just wasn't enough there anymore right um i was talking i had a similar conversation with my friend about it and it was a an analogy that i thought actually was very fitting which was where you take this jar right at the start of the relationship you take a jar and it's filled with let's just say cookies right every time something bad happens in that relationship you're taking a cookie out of that jar and when good things happen you're refilling it. And it got to the point where over that relationship, everything was, all the bad things were taking cookies out of that jar and there wasn't a single thing that was refilling it. Mm-hmm. And by the time when I was like, actually, I'm, I'm worn out, I'm done. I have bled, cried everything to try and make this work and it is just not. So at this stage, something's got to give. Um, and I felt maybe at that stage because I was just so worn out about it, I lost that energy and enthusiasm to try and make it work so i was just like fuck it i'm just gonna let it deteriorate i stopped being a nice person she she's you know continued i would say continued not being a nice person but i can't be entirely truthful that she was entirely a bad person but it just got to the point where we were just hostile anything was turning into an argument and it just got to the point where um i i was checked out at that stage how long did this go on for before the decision was made was definitely a few months. Mm. Um, we had it, it got it got toxic. It got hostile, and it got to the point where actually, I like we sat down and we had a one of the most awful conversations in my life that I've had to try and say what are we doing. And it was basically, I can't remember exactly what the conversation went like, but we basically came down to a we call it quits. We make it work which are your two kind of your happy path, your, your sad path. And then there was the other one of, do we try and get help about it? And we actually decided, you know what, screw it. Let's go and talk to somebody about it. So we went along and had a counseling session. Um, and we laid everything out on the table in front of this person. And they basically, I mean, they, they didn't, they weren't able to make a decision for us. Obviously it's not really their decision to make, but they basically at the end of that hour long session said, Look, you're, you're basically in the same category, right? You can say, we're going to try and make this work and we're going to see what we can do about it or, and have, you know, after 16 years realize that you're still just fighting the same battles and it's just not going well, or you can call it quits now and, and kind of shake hands and come to terms with the fact that all of the blood, sweat and tears, while you tried making it work, you've done what you can and it just isn't right. And that was, that was the thing that almost clicked and 
it wasn't specifically that night, but it was pretty much the next day where I said, yep, I, I am so fixed or focused on the idea that it is just not working anymore, that that was it. And yeah. I don't think there was anything that she was going to be able to say or do to make it um, all of a sudden go, okay, we can try again. Because I, I was empty, right? I had nothing left. Yeah, yeah. So. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And, um, <clears throat> Leah, let's move on a, you know, from there. Okay. Your mental, like your, how you felt mentally and emotionally towards the end of the relationship versus coming out of it. Yeah, so I, I mean, putting it bluntly, I was stressed, I was anxious, I was tired. Through the last stage of the relationship, I, I was not a nice person to be around, whether it be in that relationship, whether it be at work, just I had no energy anywhere. Um, I, 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 I mean, I'd confidently say that I'd started developing a drinking problem to try and as a, you know, find a coping mechanism where, you know, let's just numb the pain and actually feel, try and feel something that's not anger and anguish. Um, and so, I mean, you, you probably remember there are a few gym sessions where I rocked up completely dusty you know <laughs> yeah. in a bad in a bad state getting to the point where i'm like rich we need to do something different otherwise i'm gonna you know vomit right now um so i was i was not in a good state with that stuff um mentally and even physically um and then after you know after basically calling it quits and having you know that done the stages afterwards we had a house together, so there wasn't as clean a separation as some people are probably able to do. There was still association with still the stress of basically trying to work out what the next steps with the house was, coming into, you know, what is not a good selling market and all that stuff that added more stress. And there was almost, there was no, there was no relief after that, after we, you know, ended our relationship because there was still almost the next step of I'm now, you know, hurting and in sorrow after what I wanted to have as a great relationship is now, you know, this fine, fin, what words, there is a, you know, fin, finality to it. But then also I now have to add a pressure of working out what to do with this house. Are we going to keep it and rent it? Is one of us going to live in it? You know, we have this other commitment together. So it's not just, you know, ties cut done. Um, and that added a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, and just what the fuck am I going to do now? Um, and I just, I honestly, I don't think I had any good way of dealing with it. I fumbled my way through it. And basically, with the idea of I'm not going to be in a good state until I can move on from this. That yeah. was that was the only thing, like the goalposts or the light at the end of the tunnel, right? That's the thing that I'm trying to get to. And that's what I was just pushing for. And yeah, it was it was hard, but I I it took a while, but it was pretty much at the point where that house sold, which was <clears throat> you know, we called it quits and that was it was probably about half a year later that that actually was able to Wow. to be done so that was a long time to be trying to dr what felt like dragging a burden and a weight along I'm not saying she was a work burden or a weight more just i'm wanting to cut this done yeah it's still, and it's still in your life exactly yeah. exactly so that was hard that was really rough um and once that kind of final thing was done was an unbelievable weight off my shoulders and almost like night and day switch between being stressed out, what am I doing with this? Please can the sale go through to, like, okay, like I'm done. The house is now gone unconditional. I moved out into a flat with my best friend and it was basically, yeah, just completely liberating. Nice. Such a different experience. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, just, okay, now I have nothing but time to focus on myself, progressing into the things like, reaching back out to my family and having some brutal conversations with them, you know, when I just all of a sudden go like start communicating, 
and they're all sitting there going like what happened where were you like we we were hurt and, and just cut off and we thought like we didn't know what to do how we could reach out and that I mean that that hurt hmm. seeing physically having a conversation with you know somebody that you love like your mum your sister that kind of stuff and just watching the pain on their face when you try and have a conversation and they're just like you know we didn't know what was going on we didn't know you know we thought we would almost never see you again and that realization was like fuck i i have done things wrong in my life and watching having to sacrifice my family was something that i should never have done should have never considered it and i put them through so much pain and you know all i can do is go back and apologize for my actions and hope that that's enough and and and, and thankfully it was it wasn't not, not just like a, hey i'm sorry i'm back now you know it was a really like hard on my sleeve guys i've fucked up and like, i miss you and i want to be still part of your lives and thankfully you know like like a lot of families would they go like yeah this was shit and we're gonna be honest with you like our perspective is you fucked up but you know we want to try and rebuild things and it took some time like to try and build relationships again with them mm. um but we've definitely gotten to a point now with that as well where that's all good and the same thing happened with friendships maybe a little bit less emotional especially you know some of the boys being boys are like you fucked up and they just absolutely drag me over hot coals for some of the shit that I've done but <laughs> if anything you know that's yeah that that reaffirms that you know I've got good friends that like I've always had the perspective of like good friends will you know they'll talk shit to you and they'll drag you over shit but they'll also be there if you need them to and that was what immediately felt like again when I went back to them and and kind of wore my mistakes and like yeah tried rebuilding nice so wow. yeah 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 so night and day difference eh? yeah it was and That's i good. mean even now being quite like yeah basically another six months on from where that was oh, I, I can't tell you how like de-stressed <laughs> my day-to-day is now um it's yeah it's really really nice yeah yeah good good what are you fo- i mean what are you focusing on where's your energy and attention at the moment um it so much of it is on trying to make trying to trying to make myself better right mentally and physically i've put a lot of attention back into my physical fitness so going on to the gym on a very constant basis um and then um getting back into the things that i let go so building all my family relationships um, and getting back into the hobbies that I let go. Um, and for the most part now, as of relatively recently, I would say that I've brought them back to, not specifically where I dropped them, but to a point where I, I, I fit back into all of those environments, right? Like my friends are all good again, like good banter, good, good social situations. I get invited to things again family situation same thing i don't feel awkward if i had to reach out to my family members to to talk about things like it's all it's all just like i hadn't left now again but i always do worry about some of the scars that could still sit there um and i don't think i'll ever forget that and neither will they so that always worries me a bit Hmm. but yeah a lot better (laughs) (laughs) Now I'm interested in the dating life. Dating life. <laughs> What's the been happening? juicy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what this is what my people want. This <laughs> <laughs> Give the people what they want. Then. Um, yeah. What comes to mind? When, you know, when I ask you about um, your romantic interests. Yeah, at the moment it's actually probably not as hot and spicy as I'd like it to be. Just putting it very bluntly. Um, it's it's something though where I haven't really prioritized it either. I, um, you know, coming out of a longer, uh, I say longer, I mean four years. Some to some people that's not much. To some people that is a long time. Um, you know, it's pretty long, and I have not wanted to get myself into any other 
relationships or any of that kind of stuff while I'm still in, in what is possibly in a phase of working on myself. Um, that being said, I feel like that I've kind of reached that stage now where I feel good about myself and where I'm at life perspective. So perhaps in the nearest future, I'll look to actually put some dedicated energy into it. Um, though I, I did download, you know, some dating apps not too long ago Yeah. and go, okay, maybe even if I'm not looking for a relationship, would it be nice just to try and form, have some fun perhaps or anything like that? I have a strong perspective on dating apps in the first place. I'm not overly, I'm not an overly strong advocate for them. Um, I don't, how do I phrase this? I don't overly like the concept of them from a, you are quite physically um, judging a book by their cover and only then progressing to, to hopefully find that their personality matches yours. Um, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong. It is just not one that I resonate with. Um, yeah. I don't like... I. I have a perspective of myself where I would much rather sit down and have a conversation with somebody, find out about how they are personality wise and understand who they are before even considering, you know, does their appearance match what I would want, right? Because, I mean, appearances can change, especially as you grow. Um, and that's not the be all end all. I would much rather have somebody that I can emotionally connect with and actually have conversations with about things that matter, you know, deep and meaningful ones rather than, all right, you look stunning, but I don't want to speak to you. Please don't open your mouth. <laughs> um, so that perspective and ideology that I have around that is one that is very polarizing to what the dating apps can concept is. Yeah. Um, even uh, I was actually talking with a friend the other day about this and I've never, I've never had a strong perspective of how I am appearance wise, maybe for lack of confidence or something like that. I don't know, but I've always gone like, well, if I'm going into a situation where people are going to judge me based purely on my appearance before moving on to any form of next step that I could be at a disadvantage or anything like that. And I don't see that being good as a mental um, aspect, right? If you're sitting on there, and I had an experience when I had used Tinder and Bumble some years ago, right? Um, and it was a case where, you know, you're, you're sitting there, you're swiping, you're swiping, and actually just nothing is happening. You're getting no traction. It was like half a year of, of actually genuinely trying to give it a go with practically zero results what, what do you reckon why are there zero results i mean you're just not getting any matches or well yeah and that's what so it was <laughs> what do you reckon? i don't know maybe i'm just fucking ugly <laughs> um no uh there were i mean i had maybe a handful of matches like five to ten right over 50 percent of them were ones where i would match with the person I would send a message that I thought could be funny or flirty or whatever, you know, you kind of, what you kind of expecting to do and then never get a reply and then get unmatched. And I wasn't sending anything. What I would say was over the top. Maybe I've got awful fucking, um, chat up game, but I don't think so. Um, you've got a good I, chat, Ben. You've got a good oh, chat. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Thank you. Um, but no, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. And it just never progressed past the match. And I do know after I talked with some, you know, like female friends, that they had said that, oh, well, actually a lot of girls jump on dating apps purely for validation, right? I, I want to have X number of matches and that's it. It's purely like, well, if boys are matching with me, it means that they, that I look good. Yeah. It makes them feel good about exactly, themselves. Exactly. Right. Hmm. And so that, that pissed me off where it's just like, well, actually I might be on here to try and meet people and actually, you know, form some level of relationship or, or connection with somebody, whether it be just fun or longer term, who knows? Um, and yeah, where, where a lot of them are, are having like not even progressing to the point where I get a response that fucking sucked. Yeah. Right. Where it's just like, okay, where am I going wrong with this? Like, I feel like I'm actually trying, but, um, a lot of people, uh, yeah, they're just almost getting, getting like completely ignored 
Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was not a fun experience, that one. Um, and I'm just not, yeah, not a big fan of that. So as far as the next steps for dating is concerned, fuck, honestly, I, I don't really know. Um, it probably doesn't help that I don't put myself in many social situations to meet people. Like, yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I don't think many people probably go out to, to clubs and stuff like that anymore. I'd, I'd say that date, I, my perspective is that a lot of people use dating apps now as, as the common way to meet people, right? Previously, people were like, oh, how did you meet? Oh, I'm not going to say Tinder, so we need to come up with some story. Whereas nowadays, it seems a lot more. I mean, shit, there's how many, many fucking dating apps out under the sun? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. And I'm not really... <laughs> I'm not really one to rock along to a club by myself hoping to, <laughs> to meet somebody. My friends are definitely not the kind of guys that will go along to a bar or a club. So, yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of ruins that... Um, social aspect a little bit or, or I guess avenue of meeting meeting people yeah. um, well so I don't know. you're about to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to put you on uh, <laughs> put me on display yeah you are on display I'll sell you I'll sell you <clears throat> ladies <laughs> how good of a car salesman are you this is here this is my, bad boy here's my bad boy friend Ben <laughs> <laughs> standing at 6'2 92 kilos <laughs> muscular build <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's a good looking guy. Cheers, bro. He's uh, chival- chival- chivalrous. 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 <clears throat> yeah. He's, uh, you know, his heart's in the right place. He works on himself. <laughs> his physical appearance is, is important to him. He's no, owned good. property. He's successful. Fuck. It's a wonder. You're only single because you're not but You're not out there. Pro- well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I want to say probably, but that sounds way too big ego. No, no. But yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and, and young. And young. You know, the right age. What does that mean? Well, no, I mean you're you're not forty. I'm a prime flower, just waiting. You're, 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 you are quite um, yeah, young. I'm marketable, extremely marketable. Oh, how good! Yeah, so please put your <laughs> put your applications comments, below. Yeah, comment in the comment section. Rich has my number. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the highest bidder. The highest bidder. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> it has been it's really interesting to see yeah to hear about that mm. journey and that struggle of kind of being stuck yeah. in that relationship is, uh, yeah. It's very, yeah, it's one of those things where I think I, I don't regret it. I think that's one of the biggest things that I will say. I, I went through what I would call a rough relationship um, where our two, re- our two personalities probably didn't work and we should, we had some bad arguments early and we should have probably looked to call things at that stage. You know, in the, you know, three to six to nine month mark. Yeah. And it's very eye opening when you look back and you go, why did I accept all of these things? Right. They were clearly things that were like morals and, and things that I choose to live by that I'm now having to give up. And that's one of the biggest things that I have realized with whatever comes next. Right. These are the principles and morals that I need in my life and if somebody can't accept that why would i why would i try and sacrifice my things or even make them sacrifice their things right because it is a two-way street why would i make either either side sacrifice things to try and make it work when they are the core pillars or fundamentals that you choose to have in you right there's definitely things you know it is still going to be part where you have to sacrifice things but not the not the key things to who you are. Yeah, not a fundamental level. I mean, it's very important that in relationships that your values yeah. line up. Yeah, exactly. In some form. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, um, you can have real, as you know. You can have some. Yeah, you can have <laughs> some tension, friction. right? Yeah, exactly. Real yeah. bad friction. Um, so, yeah, like I don't regret it, and I've learnt a lot from it, and yeah. that's the. I guess that's the main thing, right? Is is taking those lessons and you know, knowing more about how I can deal with things and what I should and shouldn't have to deal with. Nice. So, that's life though, right? Yeah. Fucking up certain things and learning from it. Learn. You keep learning. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Good stuff. Cheers. I think we'll wrap it up there. Awesome. On that nice note. On that nice note. Yeah. Thank you very <laughs> much, Ben. Awesome. I appreciate it. No worries. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And thank you, everyone. Your time and attention is always appreciated and never taken for granted. Yeah. And to you all, see you again soon. <laughs> that brings us to the end I want to thank everyone for watching or listening 
If you enjoyed this episode, please share it or check out my website, www.hewlich.life. Please join me for my next episode.